Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to RMA Fire, and this is a quick tip. All right, so on today's tutorial, I'm gonna cover how how do we go about rendering just, just the lines, you know, just uh, the lines you see on the geometry. So um, I have this test model here. All I'm gonna do is select the hands because I think the hands would be pretty cool to do some tests with. Um, delete everything but the hands. Just drop down transform and let's place this on the on the axis center. All right. Uh, so the first things first. Whatever whatever has a line, it's what's gonna be rendered. So you could do a few different things. Like one option is to remesh if you wanted to change the way in which these lines are essentially tracing the geometry. So in this case, you would get a different sort of composition. Um, for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna do it like this. And what we're gonna do is you don't even need to use a card or anything. Um, all you need to do is come out here, just delete this, come here into Redshift, say strands, render object in strands, and you can pick strip, box, cylinder, cone, strip, or whatever. And what this is gonna do is gonna read your P scale. The default scale, um, we can change here. It starts at 0.1, and this is a scale multiplier to drive the scale of like how big these lines are. So let's drop down a dome. Let's use a... RMA Fire. Uh, parking volume one pack or HDRI. Uh, let's just use whichever one, they're all absolutely amazing. You can find this on my website. Um, let's just grab a new camera from here. When you're out, drop down a render node. And on our material, we're gonna do redshift. Redshift and RS material. And I'm just gonna make it an emissive material on red, whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter. Come in here and on your render, just select that material. And uh, on our out, render view. All right, guys, let's see what we get. Let's just hit render here. And there you go. Off the bat, you get something pretty decent to work with. Um, you can select it here and then start to play around with the default scale. Uh, so something like 0, 05 is going to make it very thin. The subdivisions here, the tessellation is just going to subdivide it. Um, and uh, the global scale multiplier is just going to scale it up or down um, uniformly. So sometimes when you work with this kind of geometry, like things can get pretty detailed. So what I would suggest is just, uh, you can come here to your camera on, let's just click here. Make sure that we're looking through the camera. If you select your camera and hit enter on the viewport and then hit Z, you can um, position your Z depth. And we're gonna position the Z depth on one of them. And then we're gonna go on the redshift tab, depth of field, and enable the depth of field. Um, and then the, the depth of field is really gonna help kind of like isolate when things can get a little bit really, really like hectic. 
Um, so as you can see, it kind of blurs out things in the background and focuses, uh, makes your focus in a specific area. So it, it's useful to try using that kind of stuff for this. And the last tip that I could give you guys for this kind of stuff is that you could definitely play with the controls here and maybe add a little bit of bloom. Um, and then this is going to start to give it that UI kind of like uh, futuristic uh, feel. All right, guys. Hope you like this quick tip and I'll be back with more.